If you enjoy this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for just $5 a month. Click on the card in the upper right hand corner for more information. Hey guys, this is Julian of Julian Gray Media and Juno the Cat, apparently. <laughs> this is a clip from the Inside the Project view of my brand new remix on Injuna Beats, Will I Change? If you're interested in watching that other video, it's about 30 minute commitment. It goes track by track of that song. Go and click on the link in the upper right hand corner right now and you can check it out. So when I'm working with students or if I'm repairing your songs on one of my Fix Your Project streams, one of the most common problems that I run into is a lack of an understanding of an arrangement. And an arrangement, <laughs> the arrangement of your song is obviously important for many reasons, but one of the key reasons is for energy transmission. You don't want your whole song to sound like an eight bar loop. And I've seen a lot of newer producers take, you know, this core idea of like eight bars, they, they work on it for like a few hours, they're really excited about it, and they're so excited about it and they're so jaded by you know that initial excitement of oh this is really cool this is an awesome idea they take that eight bars and they just essentially loop it for the next four minutes and you end up with a really stale arrangement with not a lot of energy dynamics this is a really common problem i see with newer producers and it's essentially due to a fundamental lack of understanding of an arrangement so today I'm gonna to show you a really cool technique that you can employ, not just in Ableton, but in any DAW that supports MIDI, just to visualize your arrangement a bit more. Your eyes are clearly more trained than your ears when you're first starting out, so if you can see the length and logically reason this buildup is too long by looking at it, it's much easier than trying to listen for that with an untrained ear. So without any further ado, let's jump into the video. This is something I do in every track and I think it's something that a lot of newer producers could benefit from doing. A lot of times producers, uh, when they're starting out in live, they'll go and they'll add a bunch of locators. Like this is our drop, this is our breakdown. And what this does, if I scroll down here and you see, you just have a lot of vertical lines through your project file. It gets very cumbersome to see um, and it really, really takes away from you know, the optics of this horizontal layout. If, if you start to get too many of these, it becomes very cumbersome to look at and it's hard to identify what each of these are. Of course, you could label them. Uh, you know, this could be your breakdown or this could be your uh, verse, I don't know. But it becomes really, really cumbersome to look at and it's not immediately uh, clear what this is uh, when you're looking at it from, you know, first glance. So what I like to do is actually uh, use this method I came up with a few years ago uh, and actually just put a MIDI clip, two MIDI clips on the top of the, the track. You can actually do more if you need, if you need to describe anything. But what I do is I, I put these MIDI clips at the top. Uh, generally, I call this an arrangement channel. I don't know if that's even spelled correctly, but you, you get the gist. And what I do is it's, it's basically a blank MIDI clip. There's nothing actually or a blank MIDI channel. There's nothing actually in the channel strip. There's no instrument or any sort of processing at all. And all I do is actually just create clips to identify visually uh, what each section of the track is. So instead of doing you know a locator here for an intro and then you know eight bars later do another locator for verse and then 16 later one for breakdown, I like to do this with MIDI clips. And there's a lot of advantages to this. If you if you have you know a clip here. I can just click on it, I click on the top bar, I can hit Command L or Control L on Windows and I can just loop that section over and over. So if I want to work on my verse, it's easier to do that than, you know, highlight Command L or even, you know, drag this loop region around. And also if you're trying to record something in, you can, you know, highlight the section, punch in, uh, punch out so that you can record only for that verse part or what have you. That's one benefit here and I'm sure you can see optically this is much easier to follow than a bunch of vertical lines. So I always like to do this in every every track. And it also helps you uh, newer producers out there to really identify problems in your arrangement. So like a lot of times producers have like sections that are too short or too long for you know your verse versus your drop uh, contrast. You don't want your drop to be five times longer than your verse. Um, you don't want your verse, especially don't want your verse or breakdown to be exceptionally long. And this allows you to visually and optically see, okay, this is 16 bars, this might be a little bit too long. If I need to do a radio edit or an extended version or an instrumental version, what have you, uh, I have a different 
alternate version of the song. I always like to do it in the same project file just so that we can, you know, easily make mix adjustments without having to bounce back and forth between two separate project files. I used to do that back in, you know, 2013, 2014, where I'd have a radio edit and an instrumental and a, you know, what have you version, and they were all different separate project files. So I, I don't like doing that anymore. I like to just, you know, toss it in the arrangement. When I'm ready to export, I just click on the version I want to export. I do Command L, and then I can export that version just by exporting the loop region. There's other stuff you can do with this too, like if you want to, you know, add in uh, another MIDI clip for notes or something like that, where wherever you see the clip is something you have to address, uh, you can also do that and label the clips. This is just a technique that I use that I think is something that can benefit a lot of newer producers that I haven't really seen anyone else do this and I think it's really useful. You can also just group these and call it like an arrangement. But yeah, so that's, that's the arrangement uh, up here. If you're ever wondering what you see up here, I wanted to address this because a lot of people wonder and ask me in my other Fixture Project videos, like, why do you do that? And um, I think that this is a very clear way optically to see your arrangement in full. So just to wrap things up, guys, this method really, really helps for new producers to visually see exactly how long each section of their song is. One thing I would like to add to the clip that I recorded in the last video, which you just saw, is that you can actually base your arrangement lengths on a reference track. So if you drag in one of your favorite songs and you're new to arranging, you can actually base your arrangements on tracks that you already know and love. So let me know what you think of this technique in the comment section below. If you have any ideas for future videos, give the video a comment as well. Make sure to give the video a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. It helps me figure out what you guys like and don't like. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I make them relatively often. Not as much these days, but sometimes. <laughs> and again, if you want to check out my previous Inside the Project video of Will I Change, make sure to check it out in the description below. I'm Julian of Julian Gray Media, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.